masonry. Once you start the rebuild, you want to start right here at the cone level. We're going to cut it to the proper height and slope, and you're going to take your piece of insert liner, put a liberal amount of the white sealant, it's a urethane sealant, to the bottom of the insert liner, and then turn it over and press it down onto the cone, making sure that you've got no wobbling or voids under that liner. If you've got any voids, you want to fill those with the urethane sealant and wipe it in on the inside. You want to let it squish out on the outside. That's important because it's going to help bond the next seal on. You need to make sure you put enough sealer on there so that it'll bond the uh, water stop when you put that on. Next thing we do is we move to the water stop. We press it in. It has an angled edge on each uh, edge of that. and You want to press those angles in so it's laying on a 45 degree angle. There's a little blow up of the uh, water stop. It should lay crossways like a 45 degree and you press it in. When you wrap that bentonite around this repair there will be a joint where the two ends come together. Knead it together so that you've got a secure seal. Then we'll put another liberal amount of the white sealant at the top of the insert liner after the cut and place the manhole frame back on to the insert liner and check across the top with a level. You check with the line of traffic. Now we want to make sure that we've got some three-quarter inch aggregate right in this area. Remember how we over excavated on the preparing and removing process. That was why we took it down three inches. Now we're going to put the three-quarter inch aggregate in. Sometimes you'll find a manhole that the aggregate's already there. If that's the case, no need to excavate. If it's muddy or you're unsure about drainage, go ahead and do this step right here. When you put that aggregate in, don't come all the way to the top of the cone. Leave it down a half inch or so because we want concrete to lock over that edge just a little bit so we don't get lateral movement, shifting of this repair. You can see the epoxy coated rebars and where they're placed in the drawing. Uh, follow those directions. This is going to keep the concrete in one piece which makes this repair more secure. It's going to keep water from migrating through any cracking that may occur in this and it will keep the insert liner from being shifted on the top of the manhole so observe the placement of your rebars. I might add the rebars are not in a specific diameter when they come to you. They're, they have an overlap and it's variable. So you want to select the right diameter for the cut you're making and the cuts vary because of the different frame sizes and to achieve this rebar placement that's shown on the drawing you have to change that overlap and tie those securely with a wire couple wire ties on each re-rod ring. When you get to the top of, of the uh, repair with the pouring process you want to vibrate adequately to get concrete under the manhole frame. That is becoming your cast in place epoxy rebar reinforced adjusting ring perfectly sized for this manhole that you're repairing. The area above the flange is the collar and the reason we specify concrete all the way to the surface as a collar Concrete does not dip or cup like asphalt does. And it doesn't get humped up because when you're putting in asphalt, if you get a little bit too much in, you can roll all you want, but you're going to have a hump between the edge of the flange and the edge of the cut. And that's going to translate into a bump with traffic, cause bumping and then impact loads on this frame that are unnecessary. So when you pour this, concrete, make sure to get it flat from the edge of the cut over to the edge of the frame. And then we dye that black with dye that we provide in our material packages. And I might add that all the material we're specifying here comes in the Mr. Manhole 
material packages. They're packaged in units of 20 manholes each and they'll have everything you need except for the ready mix concrete and the concrete sealer that we spray right on top of the concrete after the repair. Everything else is included in there. After you've poured the concrete and put a nice brush finish on that black surface, then the next step is to fill this void with the Brewer Coat pourable asphalt seal that we provide with the material packages. We want to make sure we get a three quarter inch edge on that concrete to create a groove for that sealant to flow into. Pour that sealant in in a sufficient amount to seal that crack. The next step then is to apply the medium solids concrete sealant. A UCO product will work well like Res Seal. Spray that repair and then cover it with the Mr. Manhole poly cover disc which is going to slow down the hydration process and give you a high quality repair. All of your slumps and so forth are in the specification. Uh, the concrete mix designs are in there. Uh, every, all the material is very well spelled out in the specification. So you need to study this and understand it. Follow this repair method to the T and you'll get a repair that will last every time.